so as you see that uh, this is what building portfolio is solving this mathematical equation um, so equal portfolio makes sense in certain scenarios so one scenario is very trivial of course uh, you might have guessed that you have all the things equal so you have exactly four different strategies so it's a trivial case that of course uh, you can go for equal allocation it doesn't make any difference the other one is that uh, uh, if you if you are familiar with uh, calculus um, you can figure out that when we are talking about solving this equation and we get uh, equal port equal allocation for all the strategies it smells very much like we are trying to maximize the products of the weights so although u is a function of p it doesn't have to have p in this so in this case the u degenerates into a product of the weights so this is one way of uh, looking at it now uh, economically uh, there is not much explanation that why would someone do this but the third point is what average portfolios really is so if you have some sort of uh, data science background i'm sure that you guys are familiar with what you call regularization so for example if you're doing a linear regression or even if you're doing uh, if you even if you're training a, a network you'll add some uh, regularization so in network the common regularization is usually the dropout but in linear regression uh, one very common uh, the regularization method is what we called L2 regularization. Uh, also, this kind of regression is called ridge regression. So that is basically uh, trying to um, give a penalty based on the square of some uh, errors. And here, what you can think of when you say that we are going to uh, invest uh, equally in all the asset classes. What, uh, so here we are. We can think of this is an optimization problem where we're trying to maximize the portfolio value, the U, and also uh, we are trying to uh, putting a penalty on this with a very, very high penalty value on the square of the error. And uh, we are so much uncertain about uh, our models, our underlying models, that we put a very high penalty value, and then we end up with a, a equal allocation uh, for all this because you of, of course you know that if you want to minimize x square plus y square plus z square with the constraint that x plus y plus z equal to one you'll end up uh, with a solution of x equal to y equal to z so this is what happens when you go for average allocation so we'll see later uh, for uh, what are the cases for different types of allocations when when one should do what so the case where you have a very high uncertainty about the model of your world this is a case where we should go for um, equal allocation portfolio for whatever is your investment universe or strategies. But uh, empirically, of course, it does good. Uh, actually, uh, it's not very bad. But if you have a good model, we can do better than random. OK. Uh, so as you said, there's, there's a fair chance of having an equal weighted portfolio do well. So is there, are there any particular approaches to better an equally weighted scheme? Let's see. So if you have a better uh, model of your world, uh, uh, better model of the market, uh, to be more precise, uh, you can do better than average portfolio. So, uh, so let's be reasonable and uh, let's assume that uh, we can predict the expected returns of our strategies and uh, we can measure the risks of our strategies or the assets, right? So now it, it, it's, uh, it's, it sounds like a very simple assumption, so it's not that straightforward. Uh, we'll see later that uh, measuring the risk is a bit more easier, but uh, expected return, estimating that is a bit tricky. Uh, but at least I assume for the timing that is possible. And we also assume that uh, we prefer a higher returns for a given amount of risk, uh, which sounds like a no brainer, but actually it took us for a long time to uh, formalize this statement, uh, a really long time. Um, and uh, alternatively, we, uh, for a given return, we prefer uh, among different portfolios with the same return, we prefer the one with the uh, lowest amount of risk. So if you have this uh, 
these two sets of uh, assumptions, uh, then uh, this sets up for the famous mean variance optimization, uh, or also known as uh, modern portfolio theory. And uh, we can we can see that uh, somewhat. Uh, this is something closer to what we called quadratic utility. So, uh, as I could understand returns, but what exactly do we mean by risk and what what is this utility function if you could just explain that uh, okay so i think uh, risk most of us uh, already have some idea but utility may be new for uh, most of us uh, so let's take an example um, let's take a look at this particular game um, in, in case you guys are uh, not aware of it, this is also known as uh, St. Petersburg paradox. So you pay a certain amount of dollar, let's say dollar X, uh, to play a betting game against the house, the casino. Uh, the game starts with one dollar in the pot uh, that's put by the house. So at each turn, the dealer toss a coin. If it tails, then you get whatever is in the in the pot. And if it hits, then we move on to toss again doubling the amount in the pot. So for example, you paid X, if X can be five or 10 or one or whatever, uh, that is the question we need to estimate. Uh, and in the first turn, you get a tail, so you get $1 game over. Uh, on the first turn, it's a head, so you go to, uh, so the pot becomes $2. Again, on the second turn, we get a head, the pots become four and so on. So it doubles very fast. But uh, as soon as we get a tell, the first tell, the game is over, you get uh, whatever in the pot. The question is, uh, how much one should pay to play this fair game? Now, um, most of us who are familiar with some sort of probability theory or a bit of maths or even I'd say common sense, uh, they would say that uh, under different scenarios, um, whatever is the whatever is the average expected outcome of uh, this game, that is the amount that we should pay. So for example, if you see that the average expected value of this game is say $10, we should pay $10. Now there is a problem with this. The problem is apparent in this uh, graph. So what I've done is that I've ran some simulation of this game and uh, ran different simulations and computed um, what is the expected outcome, and then I arranged them in the increasing order. So you see that it's a very interesting curve. It's an exponential curve. And uh, being an exponential curve, uh, it is very clear that in this case, we do not have a average value. If it had an average value, the curve would have been something like uh, closing uh, distribution or it's a uh, it's uh, fluctuating about a certain mean level or something where it's an exponential curve so there is no average value here so that's why we talk about uh, risk and utilities uh, and uh, that's how we come about uh, to the conclusion that how much to pay just for your um, if you're curious, so this particular problem can be solved using uh, certain um, utility function. Again, we are going back to the utility function, uh, uh, which is a log utility. Now, this is what, uh, to be uh, more uh, mathematically precise, so this is what a utility function or utility in general you can say. So it's basically a mathematical function of our wealth, our current wealth. Given our current wealth, uh, utility function tells us that one extra dollar, how much it is worth. It's kind of a marginal utility uh, measurement for your, in terms of, with respect to, uh, of your wealth, uh, very, very loosely. Uh, whereas risks is, uh, is a measure of uncertainty. It's now in many different uh, um, stream of, uh, work we define uncertainty in many different terms for sp specific to finance we typically talk about risks as something what you call the deviation risk measures 
uh, in particular the standard deviation standard deviation um, is i'm sure that most of you are already aware of uh, standard deviation is uh, basically uh, the square root of the second moment of the distribution and uh, these two things they are very intricately related uh, and the relation is what we called uh, risk premium so risk premium is something that tells us that given two uh, scenarios where you get a, a certain payout in one option and in the second option you have some risky payout for example in some cases you lose and in some cases you win but on an average you get the same payout the risk premium tells that um, the first assumptions that you made uh, before that people avoid risk so that assumption tells us that people will prefer uh, the first option where it is a certain payout and the risk premium measures that how much less they're ready to take how much less payout they're ready to take uh, to go for the first option so the difference between your um, the expected payout of the second game and the, the amount that one will settle for with the first option a uh, certain payment that difference is called the risk premium we'll see some formal uh, definition but uh, this is in a in a nutshell is what uh, risk premium is so for example if the most investors in the economy are indifferent between a two percent uh, per annum rate for a certain returns like a bank deposit or a treasury bill or compared to an expected eight percent return from a broad equity market where it can go up to say 16 percent it can go negative as well so that's a risk return uh, so if people are indifferent between these two choices so that means that the risk premium in the market with respect to that particular investment, that is uh, equity, is uh, eight minus three, that is 5%. So this is what, uh, what you understand by risk premium. So, uh, so. Uh, okay, uh, so how this utility and risk leads us to a good portfolio if you could just answer that for our audience mm. so uh, if you continue with the with the concept of uh, risk uh, premium so let's uh, so what we define as the risk aversion is uh, effectively uh, the fact that uh, we'll prefer a certain investment over a fluctuating investment. So for example, in this expression, that small e is a brick letter called epsilon. It's a, it's a zero mean uh, fluctuating return. So the utility of this, given our current wealth W, W, the utility of W plus E, this zero mean fluctuating return is always less than the W itself. That is, we are better without that zero mean fluctuating return and this fact is called risk aversion uh, for example if, if 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 it is equal then we say it is risk neutral and if it is greater then we say it's uh, um, risk affine so uh, those are very very uh, non-standard cases uh, but risk aversion is a common uh, assumptions that you work on and the risk premium then boils down to a value of this greek letter pi such that uh, W plus that epsilon, the utility of that, is equal to W minus pi. So that is exactly what you said before. That is the amount that we are ready to pay to accept that uh, zero mean uh, noise trading, right? Uh, now, of course, it's, it becomes a very, very, very complicated uh, um, expression, uh, and it depends on many things. It depends on W, it depends on uh, the shape, the distribution of E itself, and uh, many other uh, other parameters. But if E is small, the epsilon is small, then it becomes, um, by some mathematical tricks called Taylor expansion, it becomes a function of the variance of epsilon. So this is how we see that for certain cases, this uh, this uh, simple uh, ex this very complicated ex expression boils down to just a function of variance, and this is this brings us closer to 
uh, a way of uh, building our portfolio. If you assume a very special case, so for example, if I assume a form of uh, our utility in this form, uh, don't worry about the form. So the only thing that is important is that it goes up with our current wealth and it goes down with the square of it. So this is uh, what is known as uh, quadratic uh, utility function. Here, lambda is a particular risk parameter that will vary from uh, different uh, person to one individual to another. It's called, uh, it's a risk parameter. Uh, and uh, given this function, so we can prove that the expected utility, which we are supposed to maximize, is a function of the mean of our wealth or our portfolio as such, or the variance of that. So it all boils down to mean and variance with some certain assumptions. And then uh, effectively building a portfolio, which is uh, optimization of our expected wealth becomes a uh, balance between the mean and the variance of the portfolio. Now, um, as I said, that this is also the modern portfolio theory. Now, you, you may not like this particular uh, form of the utility function. In fact, uh, it is not a very nice form. There are many uh, theoretical issues with this. But um, if, if you don't like it, if you just accept that um, all asset returns are normal, even in that case, without uh, assuming any any uh, any distrib any form of the utility functions that you're going to optimize, we can come come to the same uh, conclusion because uh, since all the asset returns are normal, their uh, weighted average, the weighted sum rather, uh, which is the portfolio of the wealth, uh, that will also be a normal distribution. And as we know that normal distribution can be totally expressed in terms of its first moment, the mean and the variance. So again, uh, optimization becomes a balance between mean and variance. And this brings us to what is known as uh, modern portfolio theory.